Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today I am going to share with you some information that I think you will find very helpful if you have got a cruise booked to Alaska or if you are planning to book a cruise to Alaska. These are really helpful things that I think if you consider them will make your trip to Alaska that much better. So I would like to welcome everyone who is here with me today, our Let's Go family members and everyone who is new and invite all of you to please subscribe. That will really help us out and I think that you are going to love being part of this amazing community here as well. So when you are thinking of booking a cruise to Alaska, there are really two big things that you need to think about right when you start thinking of going to Alaska. One would be when you want to go and the other is who you want to cruise on. So let me talk about that for a minute. So first of all, the season for Alaska is generally the beginning of May through the end of September. It is comparatively a short season uh, compared to a lot of parts of the world, but is really based on the weather there. So I have been to Alaska four times now. I've been three times on Princess and one time on Holland America. So I've been twice in July, once in August, and once in June. And so let me tell you some things that come to mind. First of all, May is the month that you are going to have the least rain. Historically, Alaska is a very rainy place to visit, especially along the southeast coast there where the cruise lines take passengers. So I have visited with lots of people who live in Alaska as well as talked to several tour conductors and they recommend that the very best time to come is in May because you still get to see the ice in the water, the um, like the ice that's floating in the water, and then as you get towards the end of May, there is still a little bit of that left as well as you're getting the warmer temperatures, but you are sticking with the time that historically has less rain. Now September historically has less rain as well, and then June, July, and August usually have a little bit more rain. The nicer things about being in June, July, and August is that is usually when it is a little bit warmer. You generally see more wildlife, and um, it is more crowded in the parts during that time though. But when I just went in June. I went June, um, what day did I go? June 25th. It was very warm. There was tons of wildlife and I thoroughly enjoyed my cruise then. So my goal next is to go right at the end of May. I've consulted a lot of people and they say that last week of May is perfect. So that's what I'm looking to do and you will hear more about that. So think about what your goals are, what you want to see the most, and then the other important thing to remember when you go is the price. So clearly the June, July, and August, and really I would say even um, June and July even more so are the times that the um, it costs the most to go. That's when the cruises cost the most. Once you start to get into August, you still have the great weather as far as the warmer temperatures, but children start going back to school and so that usually has an effect on the price of the cruises. Alaska is a place that is known that you get a lot of multi-generational families cruising, a lot of families that are just the mom and dad with the younger children because there is so much for children to learn and see while they are there as well, as well as being a fun place for everyone to go. So kind of think about the time that you would like to go. And if you are really tied in like right when your vacation is available from work, or something like that, or you've got lots going on, absolutely go when you can go. Just book your ticket and go. Just book your cruise and off you go. I highly recommend Alaska. I cannot recommend Alaska enough. And I would even say if you don't really want to go to Alaska, that you should try it at least once because I've talked to a lot of people that didn't know what to expect and they came away loving Alaska and wondering when they could go again. The other really important thing to think about when you're booking your cruise is to pay attention to which cruise line that you are going to go on. The cruise line that you choose is going to have an impact on clearly your onboard experience, it's going to have an impact on your itinerary, and it is also going to have an impact often on how many hours you have in port. So here's everything to think about that. So first of all, look at the itinerary. So there are several different itineraries that you can choose from when you're going to Alaska. First of all, they've got the ones that there are really, I think, the most cruises to choose from that are the round trips out of Seattle. 
the round trip out of Seattle usually hits the ports Juneau, Skagway, and Ketchikan, although we are seeing some new itineraries that will take you, um, instead of one of those ports, you'll go to Icy Straight Point, and a lot of those also include, well here, I'll talk to you about Glacier Bay separate, just one minute. So those are what those generally include, and sometimes Glacier Bay. You've got the ones that are round trip out of Vancouver, which usually go up through the Inside Passage. The Inside Passage is spectacular. The scenery there is absolutely beautiful. It is worth doing at least once in your life. And the way you get to the Inside Passage is you sail out of Vancouver and then they take you up and there's beautiful scenery on both sides of the ship. It is truly extraordinary. The other way that you're going to get to see that inside passage is the one-way voyages, which are the other kind of voyages that go from up in, they call the Port Anchorage, it's Whittier is where you sail from, down to Vancouver. You can also go the other direction and go from Vancouver up to Whittier. And those usually go through the inside passage as well. But if, so if you really want to see the inside passage, take um, special notice of which cruise you pick. Now the other thing to think of when you're doing these itineraries, and I would just say the round trips out of Vancouver often will take you up to, and depending on which cruise line you sail on, you'll usually visit Juneau, Ketchikan, Skagway. Some of those you're going to visit Sitka, which was the capital of Russia when Russia had Alaska, as well as Icy Strait Point sometimes. So really pay attention. This year with the trouble that they are having with the dog with the landslide they have in Skagway. Some of the ships that were set to sail there, um, sorry, dock there, are now docking over in Haines. So if you've been to Skagway lots of times, you can look at Haines, or if you don't want to take the ferry over, otherwise they will ferry you from Haines over to Skagway so that you can do your excursions as planned. So those are some things to think about. Always look at the itinerary. When it comes to Glacier Bay, I highly recommend Glacier Bay. It is so spectacular. If you are not familiar with Glacier Bay, read a little bit about it. It's a world, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is just spectacular. You get to see several glaciers and it is just um, really an extra special place. Be aware that Holland America followed by Princess have the most permits to go. You have to have a permit to go to Glacier Bay. You don't, um, well the passengers don't need to worry about that, but the cruise lines do. They secure those permits and if you don't have permits, you cannot go into Glacier Bay. And so it's really important if you want to go to Glacier Bay that you pay attention. Now Holland America and Princess have the most, as I started to say there, and then Norwegian also has some. Royal Caribbean and Celebrity at this time are not going into Glacier Bay. So also keep in mind though that there are other glaciers that, th that the different cruise lines will cruise by and see so that you will get a feel for it. There's the Dawes Glacier, there's the Hubbard Glacier, there's College Fjord, there's um, um, trying to think of where else. Um, Tracy Arm Fjord is an option, although I don't know that the big ships are going up there right now. And so just kind of keep in mind Glacier Bay when you look at things and pay attention to that itinerary because they can vary enough that it will have a difference in your trip. The other thing is, of course, pay attention to the cruise line that you're going to sail on. They all do have a little bit different of kind of a vibe there, um, the way that they do things and the experience that you're going to have on board. So pay attention to what is offered on the different ships if you're taking your children and they're not going to be happy if they're not doing lots of outdoor activities and um, the little climbing wall and all these kind of things look at uh, Royal Caribbean um, but just kind of and I can talk about things in another video about what the vibe is on different cruise lines but it really can make a big difference if you want a very quiet cruising experience you might want to look at Holland America um, there's just all of these different things to consider so that is one reason it's really nice to have a travel agent because he or she could kind of direct you a little bit in thinking about it but there's lots available online if you want to do it on your own you surely can the next thing that I wanted to um, talk to you all about is cabin selection. Once you've got your cruise line selected, um, you can do an inside. Inside is less expensive generally than a balcony cruise is, a balcony cabin. I would say that if you can easily, if you can afford the balcony cabin, Alaska is a place that you're going to want to do it because there is really so much to see. It is so beautiful and it is really nice just to be able to step out on your own balcony and enjoy that. You can sit in the chair and 
take it in as you go by. You can stand there and just see everything right there. You don't have to worry if it's crowded up at the on the open decks. You can just enjoy everything right there from your own cabin. But if it's not in your budget, still go. Get your inside cabin and definitely go up on the open decks a lot so that you can take everything in and get to see it really often. I was just on Holland America and I know that there were a lot of people in interior cabins, but it was never super crowded up on the top decks and they, we were sailing at 75% capacity. And so don't have it be a deal breaker if you don't feel like you can afford a balcony cabin. Just go ahead, get your interior, and off you go. So that's important. And then also, if you are doing a one-way cruise, like if you are going from Anchorage up there, Whittier, down to Vancouver, keep in mind that the scenery all the way down is going to be on the port side. Same way if you're going from Vancouver up to um, Anchorage, all the scenery is going to be on the starboard side. So pay attention to things like that. And then also, when you are going round trip out of Seattle, you and Vancouver, you kind of double back. So if you don't see it on the way up, you have a really good chance to see it on the way back. So that just kind of, um, that one, it doesn't matter quite so much. And then when you're in places like Glacier Bay or they cruise you to a particular glacier to look at it, the captains do a really good job of the ship in turning so that everybody on one side gets a long time to look and then they turn the ship so that everyone on the other side gets a long time to look as well. So which side of the ship you're on isn't going to impact if you get to see a glacier or not from your balcony. Now the next thing that I think is really important to know about going to Alaska is the weather and I have a whole separate video about what you should pack if you're going to Alaska so I will link that below for you but it's really important to remember that a lot of Alaska like Juneau is in a rainforest it is so rainy there usually and so keep in mind that that is important as well as the fact that the temperatures in Alaska, especially during the cruise season, can change a lot just during the day. So layers really are the key, not so that you're just warm and comfortable with a waterproof layer on the outside, but also so that if you go throughout your day and it gets really warm, you can take off things down to your short sleeve shirt or whatever, and then put it back on if it cools off again. And so that's um, really important to remember. That is really important to remember. So, but do watch my video though, because I go into more depth about it and have good suggestions for you. So keep that in mind. Now along with thinking about the weather, the other really big thing is excursions in Alaska. So if you have not been to Alaska yet and you look at the excursions that are offered once you book your cruise or if you're thinking about booking a cruise, they are definitely um, more pricey. They are more expensive than what I saw when we went to the Mediterranean, sorry, when we went to the Caribbean, when we went to Mexico. Um, and then even more than some of the ones in Europe. And it's because um, a lot of it is out in the wilderness. Everything is exp more expensive in Alaska, like go buy um, some food. <laughs> Everything there costs a little bit more. But keep that in mind and keep in mind, um, like save your money, do, you know, think about that and look at the experiences that you want to have so that you don't go there and be like, oh, I wish I would have known I could have ridden a helicopter to a glacier or I wish I would have known that that I wanted to take an excursion to see a glacier or to go salmon fishing or to do all of these different things. But the really nice thing also along with the excursions there is there is a really wide range. There is a really wide range in how much things cost, the different excursions, as well as to fit what you are what you enjoy. Whether it's if it's harder for you to get around and you don't want to walk as far, or if you, want, if you like going on a bus tour, or if you really want to go see crab and then eat crab, there's something for you. No matter what it is, there are a lot offered. My first thing to tell you though is as soon as you book your cruise, look at the excursions and book your excursion because they do sell out. And some of the really ones that are very most sought after sell out pretty quick. And so don't be thinking that you're gonna wait until it's a little bit closer to cruise to do that or that you're going to wait and do it once you get on board because you very easily can miss out on some things that you really wanted to get to do. So remember that, book right away. The other thing to, and you know what, and if you book right away and for any reason you change your mind, you can, um, you can, um, cancel that excursion and they just put the money back on your credit card like or however you paid for it 
they just give it back to you. So you're not locked in if you book something and then you're like, you know, that's not what I want to do. I want to pick something else. You just cancel the one and pick up the other. It's really very easy. So just keep that in mind. There's a lot of flexibility with that. And then once you get on the ship, you can go ahead and book excursions there as well. If there is something you really wanted to see, they do accept a certain number of wait lists places um, like options and then once they fill up the wait list then um, you can't wait list anymore but when I was just recently on this cruise um, a lot of people were in line when I was in line to switch an excursion a lot of people were in line to see first of all if their wait list had come up and then some people had received the message that someone had canceled the excursion they were waiting for and they were there to pick it up so there's a lot of flexibility there with excursions another important thing to know is that you can go ahead and book excursions other ways than just with the ship. I would say that the luxury of booking with the ship is the fact that if for any reason your excursion is delayed, um, no matter what the reason is, the ship waits for you if you have booked through the ship. So it doesn't matter if there's bad traffic, if there was an accident and the road is closed, or like any reason, um, they are going to wait for you. At the same time, Gordon and I have booked a lot of excursions um, in different places in the world and with private tour guides, and we have never had a problem with it. And so take a look, and I would say even if, like especially if you have got, like you're taking any extended family with you and you want to do some excursions and you're like, boy, it's going to cost the earth just to get all of us on that excursion. Take a look and see if you can find anything more affordable through Viator, through, um, you know, just TripAdvisor, all those ways that you would book and see what you can find. And I always read the reviews. That's how I pick who I'm going to pick when I'm doing tours that way, is I look at the reviews and see who was really pleased and what their experience was. So that's another option for you as well. So just keep all of this in mind when you're looking at excursions. The next time that we go, I am really hoping, which is next year in 2023, I really hope that we can go on the helicopter um, ride that takes you up in Juneau to see the I Juneau ice field. They land you on a glacier. I really want to do that in the worst way. I almost did it this year, but Gordon really wanted to. And so I thought I should wait so that we could experience it together the first time. So we're going to do that. But when you're in Juneau, don't miss seeing the Mendenhall Glacier. Don't miss going whale watching. Those are really big things. And they are there. It's a wonderful place place to do those things. If I were in Skagway and not been before, take the um, Skagway, the White Pass Railroad train. It is so beautiful. Such an amazing train ride. They narrate it the whole time so you learn so much. Um, you can also do helicopter sightseeing from Skagway as well to go land on a glacier. They've got that there. This time um, I went to keep an eye out. I'm putting my video up. I did the um, I did the excursion that you you went through the forest, you rode a canoe, and you went up right to a glacier. That was extraordinary. There are so many fabulous things to do. And so just kind of look at everything and catch a can. If you are a fisherman or a fisherwoman, like go salmon fishing. That is the place to do it. Um, they've got, their, and but you know what, also another important thing I do want to point out, in every port there is so much to see if you're going to explore on your own. There is lots to see. So don't think that if you don't have something booked, you're not going to have a great time. There are always lots of tour conductors waiting there as you disembark the ship to offer you excursions. So you can easily pick up an excursion then to take you to somewhere. And those are always cheaper than booking with the ship in every port they have that up in Alaska. So keep that in mind as an option as well and just see what they've got and away you go. But if you're just going to walk around town, it is still so beautiful to see those places. Absolutely worth the trip if that's what you're going to do. So that's everything about excursions. And as you watch this, if you've got any questions, just put them below and I'll be sure to answer them for you. Um, let's see. The next thing that I want to make sure that everybody knows about is... Um, this is really kind of funny, but I think it's important to say, I can't remember in my packing video if I told you to bring your swimming suit. Always bring your swimming suit when you're going on a cruise. They, The pools are always open, even Alaska. The pools are always open, the hot tubs are open. The um, You might want it to go to the spa. They've got, you know, always the thermal suite, different things there. So always bring your swimsuit when you're going to Alaska or to anywhere else. And this year when I went, it was unseasonably warm. I completely forgot my swimming suit, probably why I'm putting this reminder here. 
here and I wished I would have brought it. It was warm. It was really warm. I could have gone swimming. And so I just wanted to remind everybody about their swimming suit. Now, if you need any help or any questions, just put it below. Send me an email. I am happy to help you. But I also wanted to let you know that if you are lukewarm about going to Alaska, I would say book it and just go. There are really great fairs available for the rest of the year here in 2022. And then in 2023, the fairs are looking really good. And usually the further away you book, the cheaper it is. Every once in a while, it will get cheaper when you get closer. But until you make final payment, you can usually refair everything and get the difference in price back. And so just keep that in mind. Alaska is such a special place that I hope that you get the chance to go someday and that you thoroughly enjoy when you do get to go. And I hope that you appreciate these updates. If there's anything else you would like to know about cruising to Alaska, just let me know and I will tell you. I feel like I need to add, if you are going this year so far on all of the cruises to Alaska out of the United States and Canada, you do have to do a COVID test and you do have to be vaccinated or you have to have a medical exemption. So I just wanted to let you know that, put that out there for you so that when you're planning, if anyone, either one of those things are deal breakers, you'll know that you would probably want to go another time. So I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>